Hello everybody, this is Zach through 99 Welcome back to my playthrough of No One But You. Now, this is a visual novel that I started playing back in February. It's been a while since I played the last part, but I was having some issues with the game since they did an update right after I did part 5. So, I finally got the problem figured out and got the game loaded back up. And I'm excited to go ahead and continue with part 6 here. Now, if you remember in the other parts, uh, we had moved to a new town, we were going to a new school, uh, and we take over a young kid uh, going to school and live with my mother in a uh, new town in Japan. That girl right there that you see is Shinatsu, and she is some kind of a strange uh, girl that we have met on a bridge, uh, kind of just off the path to school. And she's one of our friends, but it really looks like she doesn't have a home. Starting to think that maybe she's some kind of a ghost or something. Not real sure. And then a lot of the other characters, we have a friend named uh, Ryo uh, at school. And we have this girl here, Megumi. Uh, she's a friend that really, really likes us at school. And then that is Shimu or something like that. Uh, that's a girl, another girl that kind of likes us. She's a pretty nice girl. And that girl right there is Yui. Yui is kind of a brat. And uh, she uh, she likes us as well, though, at the school. And kind of got really jealous when Megumi one time and her were over to study with a study group. And that happened in the last episode, part number five. So a lot of stuff going on in this game. Uh, right now, we just passed our final exams for school so that we get a summer break. And we was really nervous uh, about that because if we hadn't passed, we would have had to go to summer school. So, Megumi had let us know that there is now a trip to some hot springs that everybody's going to be going to. And she was kind of complaining in the last episode, right at the very end, that she thought it was silly that at this uh, camp where we're going to to do this hot springs thing, that they won't allow girls and boys to sleep with each other and be in the same hot springs and stuff like that. I thought that was kind of funny. So we're just about ready to get ready to go to this hot springs deal and uh, might get interesting at this point. So we're going to go ahead and continue with no one but you right after this. All right, welcome back everybody. As you can see, my last save is on March the 1st. So it's been over a month since we last played. It is now June the 16th. And like I say, just a couple of days before uh, this moment right here, we had just been talking to Megumi at the school and found out that we aced our test. And that was because I think of a lot of choices we made to not text friends and keep studying and stuff like that, which was kind of hard to do because it was kind of boring and, and uh, Hideaki, our main character here, was getting pretty worn out and uh, pretty tired of the studying nonstop. But anyway, hallelujah to us for acing our tests, and now we get to have some fun. So, Saturday, June 16th, Hideaki says, uh, hmm, num num. Now, if you see his character, I'm going to say this again one more time. If you see my face down here, that's kind of what he's saying. But if you don't see his face and you see something in words here, that means he's thinking it to himself. Okay? So, hmm, num num. I'm sorry, Mr. President. Let me make it up to you. Wait, what are you doing, Mr. President? Stop making that noise. You're distracting me. Huh? What the... Okay, so I have been having a lot of nightmares, too. I kind of forgot to mention that. So, sounds like we might have just been having another nightmare. Wow. All right. Oh, it was just a dream. A really strange and questionable one at that. As you can see, you don't see my picture here, so I'm, this is what I'm thinking to myself. I stretched my hands and turned off the alarm. I freaking hate waking up by an alarm. Why did I set an alarm anyway? It's summer break, for crying out loud. Let's just uh, go back to sleep. 
Huh? Hmm. Holy crap! The school trip is today! That's why I set an alarm! I can't believe it took me so long to realize that. <laughs> Thankfully, we didn't fall back to sleep. Good thing I set the alarm earlier than it needed to be. I should start getting ready and make sure I'll have everything with me. All right. Yes, Mom, I checked, and I have everything I need. Are you sure? I always have this paranoid feeling that I forgot something, but I'm sure it's all there. Okay, good. Just be careful, all right? And don't go wandering off on your own. Just stick to the group. Thank God my mom isn't chaperoning this thing. <laughs> mom, please, I'm almost 17 years old. I'm not a toddler. Uh, just be careful around the water, okay? It's a hot spring, not the ocean, Mom. I know how to take care of myself. I'm not stupid. Heidi, you know that's not what I meant. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'll text you when we get there. I walked over to my mother and gave her a kiss. Aw, I'll be going now. See you later, Mom. Bye, honey. All right, so we're at the school, I guess, to get on the school bus, I assume. When I arrived at school, the number of people drifting around seemed to be much greater than usual. Everyone must be excited for the trip. I don't think I've ever seen the school so crowded. Or so lively, for that matter. It's almost like people are happy to be here. Huh. I scanned the crowd for any familiar faces, soon landing on Shiro. I waved to Shiro, and she waved back, smiling. Figure Shiro would beat me here. I should have gotten up earlier. Then we could have uh, walked here together. Hmm, cool. As that thought crossed my mind, Ryo and Megumi both approached me. There we are. Megumi says, Good morning, Hideaki! Yo, yo, Heidi. You two sure sound enthusiastic. Of course. I've been looking forward to this for months. And with our exams out of the way, we deserve a trip like this. Exactly. Like you actually put any effort into the exams, Ryo. <laughs> In fact, I'm kind of surprised he doesn't have makeup class over the summer. Maybe the teachers just didn't want to come in, uh, just for his benefit? <laughs> That's funny. Could be, though. Come on, let's go inside. We'll sit right in the back, so we can all sit together. Heck yeah. Um, you guys go ahead. I need to check on something real quick. Okay, we'll save you a seat. Let's get in, Meg. Okay. Well, it's nice to see those two getting along for once. At any rate, now that I've verified the existence of Shiro, Megumi, and Ryo, that just leaves Shinatsu, as well as a certain fiery redhead. So that fiery redhead is going to be Yui, and Shinatsu is my bridge friend. I started looking through the crowd, searching for the only student in our grade with red hair. Is Yui even going on this trip? It doesn't seem like her kind of thing. I continue to look through the crowd, still without luck. Nope, I don't see her anywhere. No sign of Shinatsu either. Oh well, three out of five isn't bad. I guess I'll get on the bus. Alright. Keeping my eyes peeled for familiar faces, I began to board the bus. Ryo and Megumi are right up the back, as I was warned. Shiro sitting next to some girl from class, though they don't appear to know each other. I suppose I'll just head to the back and... Eh? As I look toward Shiro, I noticed Yui sitting behind her. Alright. Whoa, Yui is actually here? No wonder I couldn't find her outside. She must have been sitting in the bus all along. Yui was sitting by herself while listening to music. Yo, Hideaki, what are you waiting for? Just as I thought about sitting next to Yui, 
Ryo called out from the back of the bus. Ah, now this is a problem. So now it's going to give me a choice. I knew that was coming. Sit with Megumi and Ryo or sit with Yui? Well, we know Yui likes us. We know Megumi is practically head over heels uh, for us. And she's very, um, she's a lot of fun. Megumi has been a lot of fun. She kind of has an upbeat personality. Uh, Yui is more reserved and quiet. And Yui is kind of a brat as well. I mean, she's not afraid to speak her mind, even if it means hurting somebody's feelings. So, at this point, while Yui might be more attractive, or she's a, she, Yui's into kind of games, so that was kind of cool. Uh, I think that Hideaki, the character I play, liked the fact that he saw her playing games in the courtyard uh, in the last episode. But uh, Yui always hangs out in the courtyard by herself. Uh, she's just not a... She doesn't seem to really like to be around a lot of people. But she might make an excellent kind of friend to, you know, to be friends with. Uh, Megumi is probably a lot more outgoing and a lot more fun, like I say. And because I have both Ryo and Megumi uh, wanting me to sit in the back back there, and I kind of already told them I would, I think I'm going to go sit with them. Uh, as tempting as the thought of sitting by Yui might be. So, here... Uh, here I'm only maybe upsetting one person where if I set with Yui, I'm going to be upsetting two friends. So let's go set with uh, Megumi and Ryo. Oh, who am I kidding? Yui would rather set alone anyway. That's probably true. Besides, she still has Shiro in front of her. And Megumi and Ryo did save me a seat. I guess I'll uh, talk to Shiro and Yui later. I continued walking to the back of the bus. Oh, this is going to be so exciting. Whoa, sit down, Ryo. If you jump around like that, they'll kick us out. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm just having a hard time containing my excitement. Oh, I know exactly what part of the hot springs you're excited about. <laughs> Again, I said that to myself. Ah, the bus is moving. But we have a long way to go until the resort, so let's play something. Yes. No argument here. This should be a fun trip. Okay, so somebody says, I, I'm sorry I'm late. The moment the bus began to move, a soft voice drew my attention away from Megumi and Ryo. Oh, could it be Shinatsu? The, the uh, bridge girl? Surely she didn't make it. I lifted my head, glancing to the front of the coach, finally spying the fifth and final member of my circle of friends. So, Shinatsu made it after all, huh? I was beginning to think she'd be the only one to miss out. Wow, I even wasn't expecting her to make it. Uh, Shinatsu fiddled with the hem on her skirt and glanced around anxiously. Aw. The teachers didn't acknowledge her, nor did any of my classmates. They all continued chatting, oblivious to her presence. Hmm. That's interesting. Again, it's almost like she's not there except to me. Now, she's also a girl on a bridge that said she knew me uh, years before because I used to live in the same town when I was a real little, I guess. And she said she remembers me. I didn't remember her when I first met her, but she said she remembered me from when I was real little and we used to live in the same town. Uh, maybe this is why Shinatsu didn't want to go on the school trip to begin with. Because nobody uh, pays her any attention. Putting aside how poorly she does with crowds, being ignored like that can't make her feel any less anxious. I looked at the person sitting next to me, silently contemplating my escape from Ryo's side. As I checked out the remaining seats, however, I realized that the seat next to Yui was the only one left. Uh huh. Even if I managed to ditch Ryo, I wouldn't be able to sit next to Shinatsu. The only way I could make that happen would be if I convinced Yui to swap seats with me, and I know there's no chance of that happening given who I'm sitting next to. I looked at Shinatsu and smiled in an apologetic manner, shrugging my shoulders. She caught my gaze and smiled back as she walked towards the back of the bus, taking the only remaining seat as she did. Yui, captivated by her handheld gaming console, didn't even seem to notice as Shinatsu sat next to her. 
ignoring the girl as naturally as everybody before her. I guess that's the fate of the late comer, huh? Oh well, I'm sure things will turn around once we get to the resort. Damn it, Ryo, I told you, you can't move that way. Huh, what? That's stupid. You're telling me my horse uh, can't plow through the ponds? We aren't playing chess, you idiot. This is Chinese checkers. Oh, uh, I thought we were playing backgammon. <laughs> Dude, how are you supposed to play backgammon without a computer and with only three people? Ryo, I don't know what game you're thinking of now, but this isn't backgammon. Man, I'm so confused. Why can't we just play video games together like normal teenagers? <laughs> Stop it! Cut it out already! Just try and make me. That doesn't belong to you and you know it. Correction, it didn't belong to me. <laughs> but I've grown rather attached to it and now I'm claiming it as my own. You can't do that. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> Sigh. And they were getting along so well at the start of the day. <laughs> I love this. You can kind of tell she's all mad and frustrated. Love the uh, art in this game. Why not? That's how you staked your claim, isn't it? That's not how I... No, wait. You're right. I did, didn't I? And that's exactly why it's not yours to take. <laughs> well, these two fighting over something stupid is nothing new. Even so. Uh, guys? Can you, I don't know, let go of me? And surrender you to him? Never! You want me to yield your heart to her over my dead body, buddy. <laughs> Honestly, I don't even know how this argument started. All I know is that I can't feel either one of my arms. Oh wow, they're fighting over me. With two broken arms and an equal number of bleeding ears, I finally spotted our destination. Oh thank god, we're finally here. I thought I was a goner for sure. Oh, it looks like we've arrived. Huh? Well I'll be damned. I swear, the second I get out of here. <laughs> After departing from the bus and small clusters, all of the students and teachers made their way to the resort. We signed in, underwent a roll call, and began to branch off into our own little groups. Wow, this place is amazing. I've seen hot springs resorts in magazines and on TV, but I never thought I'd actually get to go to one. I wandered further into the building as our teachers handled miscellaneous arrangements with the resort staff. Man, this place looks expensive. If we weren't getting a discount for going with the school, I'd never be able to come here. Of course, it might be better to come alone or with a special someone. Being here with the rest of my grade is just kind of... noisy? Dude, can you believe this place? Talk about luxurious. I can't wait until we get to go see the girls flush it out in the bath. Speaking of noisy, while I can't say I disagree with what he said, some quiet time away from Ryo would do me a world of good. So, ready to go check out our room? Eh? What do you mean, our room? Come on, dude, get with the program. It's two people to a room, and who better to bunk with than your bestest buddy in the whole wide world? <laughs> A jaguar? <laughs> a jag. Oh, I get what you're saying. You do? Of course. No. Seriously though, I've never thought you were the type to go after older women. <laughs> no, Ryo, that would be a cougar. <laughs> That's funny, Ryo thought a cougar was called a jaguar. <laughs> Sigh, never mind. Let's just go look for our room. Alright. By speaking to our teacher, who referred us to one of the resort staff members, Ryo and I were able to find our room. 
Whoa, this is better than I expected. Yeah, man. Now this is what I call a room. We've got a view, easy access to the hot springs, comfortable beds. What more could a guy want? Wow, this room is actually having a positive effect on Ryo. Honestly, I thought he'd be hung up on the fact that the next room over has... Better yet, the girls' rooms are only a few steps away. We could sneak in there in the middle of the night and nobody would ever know. <laughs> and there it is. Ryo, whatever you have planned, count me out. What? Hideaki... I don't know what you think I've planned, but I'm offended. All I was suggesting is that we quietly walk into the girls' rooms, sneak into their rooms, rummage through their things, steal their panties, <laughs> move them around while they're asleep, molest sleeping girls, and record our exploits. <laughs> I love it. This is funny. Video evidence. Mm-hmm. Hideaki, why do you keep interrupting me? And just what the hell are you talking about? Oh, it's, uh, it's nothing. I was just recording your confession in terms the jury will understand. Dude, not cool. <laughs> Look at his face here. You're supposed to be my partner in crime, not a snitch. Aiding and abetting? Not with my rap sheet. You're no fun. Whatevs. I'm going to soak my head in the hot springs. You coming? Well, it is why we're here, but... Do I really want to go in right away? It's bound to be crowded. Huh, going now or going later? Well, I kind of already mentioned that I'd like to lose Ryo. Uh, at least for a little while, so... Uh, it sounds like he's kind of getting on my nerves a little bit. So we're going to say I'm going to go in later with him saying he's going to go in right now. Uh, hopefully I don't offend him too much. But yeah, I, I kind of agree that maybe I need a little time away from Ryo at this point. Especially after that long bus ride with him fighting and everything. Go in later. Plus maybe I'll be able to catch Shinatsu, which I really think he's interested in getting to know better uh, if I go in later. When it's not so crowded. She doesn't seem like the type that would want to go in there you know, when it's so crowded. Uh, nah, I'm gonna have to pass. I'm feeling kind of carsick from the ride over. I'll probably pass out if I go in now. Oh, okay then. Well, don't strain yourself. Just rest up and wait for my triumphant return. Huh. <laughs> I like Rayo. He's funny. Triumphant return? No, he couldn't be. Even Ryo wouldn't be that brazen. Paying Ryo no further mind... I walked over to one of the beds to lay down. Ah, this is actually pretty comfortable. There's a nice breeze coming in from the window. The blanket is warm. My bed is soft. If I'm not careful, I really might... <sighs> doze off. Uh-oh, sounds like I went to sleep. Eh? What the hell? Where am... As I looked around the room, I recognized the scenery outside through the window, and I immediately remembered where I was. Right, the hot springs. Man, I must have fallen asleep as soon as my head hit the pillow. What time is it anyway? I turned on my phone to check the time. 11.45 p.m.? What the hell? Unbelievable, I slept the whole first day away. Sensing that something was amiss, I took another look around the room. Hang on a minute, where's Ryo? I checked the bed next to mine, but found nobody there. Strange, did he return to the wrong room? Nah, knowing Ryo, he's probably raiding some poor girl's belongings. <laughs> As I wondered where Ryo might have gone, one other possibility popped into my mind. He couldn't be going out for a late night dip, could he? The hot springs were bound to be quiet at this time of the night. It's actually the perfect time to go in. I'm not sure if we're allowed in at this time of the night, but if we are... Alright, time to get, time to get into hot water. 
Huh? The lights are off. I guess Ryo isn't here. Oh well, that just means I get the place all to myself. Isn't it beautiful? Eh? There she is. Despite being convinced that I was alone, another presence made itself known. In front of me stood a person who, no matter how much I wanted to talk to them, I couldn't. Shinatsu? Yes, Hideaki. Shinatsu looked at me in a confused manner. What are you doing here so late? Were you able to get in the hot springs? No, not exactly. I didn't come here to bathe. I just wanted to look at the stars. The stars, huh? You like looking at the stars, Shinatsu? Yes, um, a little. It's a nice night tonight, so you can see them quite clearly. Looking at them is relaxing. It always calms me down. Shinatsu turned her gaze away from me and up towards the night sky. Do you know what all the stars are called? No, of course not. There are more stars out there than any human can count, let alone name. Oh, I see. What about that one? That's Altair, right? I pointed out one star at random, trying to dredge up names for my elementary school science lessons. No, silly, that isn't Altair. That isn't a star at all. Seriously? I didn't expect to correctly guess the name of the star I picked up at random, but I thought I'd at least point out an actual star. What is it then? An asteroid? A comet? A moon? No, Hideaki. It's none of those things. Phew, okay, so my guess wasn't a complete embarrassment. It probably is a star, but with some obscure distinction that only a real enthusiast would. That's Venus. Uh, oops. Uh, it's a freaking planet? Remember, I'm saying this to myself. Hmm, it is a little dim. You can only see Venus on nights like this when the sky is clear of clouds. Can you not see it in Akutama? Sometimes, Akutama is only a small town, but some of the factories on the outskirts fill the sky with smoke making it hard to pick out some of the stars and planets. You get a much clearer look here, all the way out in the countryside. That was why I wanted to come out here at night. Huh? So it's the same sky, but when you look at it from a different position, you can see things you couldn't see before. That's exactly right. It sounds rather meaningful when you phrase it like that, doesn't it? Like something from a Sosiki uh, Natsumi novel. <laughs> Did you know the moon is beautiful tonight? Shinatsu giggled at my quote. Couldn't you think of anything more original? I'm sorry, I'm not the best when it comes to my classics. That's about all the Natsumi I know. At least I know a bit more about him than I do the stars. It's alright. This isn't a test or anything, I'm just... Shinatsu turned to face me, blushing with a smile on her face. Uh-oh. I'm glad I was able to talk to you, Hideaki. I wanted to since the moment I got on the bus, but I didn't get a chance. Oh, um, don't worry about it. I'm sorry that I asked you to come here and that I wasn't able to spend any time with you. I should have made more of an effort. You don't need to apologize. We're together now, aren't we? Yeah, that's right. We are together now. I just hope we can keep on meeting like this, be it on the bridge in Okatama or underneath the stars. I felt restless all day, but now that I'm finally by her side, I feel completely at ease. That's cool. I'm not sure how it happened, but... I think I might have started to fall in love with Shinatsu. Wow. It doesn't surprise me at this point, but again, I'm meeting, again, I'm thinking this to myself, people, but uh, I think I might have started to fall in love with Shinatsu. Now, that kind of worries me a little bit, seeing as how nobody else seems to 
know who she is. I mean, is she kind of like my invisible friend? You know, that's a little concerning. <laughs> I'm in love with my invisible friend. Well, let's hope she's real. So, we're moving on, I guess, to the next day? Yep. Sunday. Finally having the chance to meet with Shinatsu, I slept well as the rest of the night passed by peacefully. We talked for a while, chatting randomly about stars, the hot springs, and anything else that came to mind. And once Shinatsu started yawning, we both called it a night, returning to our separate rooms. I'm glad I was able to meet up with Shinatsu. For a while there, I thought we'd be separated the entire trip. Luckily, thanks to a mistake on her part, we were able to spend some time alone together, unimpeded by our other friends. Or by my other friends. We should definitely find the time to do that again. With those thoughts in mind, the rest of the morning proceeded without issue or fun. Aww. One of the teachers took us to some historical place and started telling us about it, because that's what teachers do. I obviously wasn't listening, nor were most of the other students from what I could gather. Nonetheless, his speech dragged on and on, and before we knew it, noon had come and gone. Man, what a sucky trip. I only had time for one short dip in the hot springs this morning, thanks to that teacher of ours. I actually spent more time pretending to listen to him blather on than I did in the hot springs. Sure, the trip had its ups and downs, but if I try to quantify it, this trip was a disappointment. Despite my pessimistic thoughts brought on by our teacher's compulsion to teach, I'd be lying if I said the trip was a complete waste. It's all about Shinatsu here. Memories of the past. Okay. I hope I didn't miss something there. Uh, it looked like the only thing I could do is click the thing. Hmm, okay. The only upside for this whole trip was getting to speak with Shinatsu. And with the trip now coming to an end, that may remain the high point. Not that that's a bad thing, of course. There's nothing wrong with enjoying time spent with friends. Nonetheless, for such a rare trip to pass by so quickly and without incident, I really do feel like I missed out on something here. Well, maybe we can come back. I mean, we know it's really nice there, and we know we'd like to spend some time there with somebody special, and we kind of know how special Shinatsu is to us. So, uh, you know, I think we learned enough there to make a great night in the future. Just saying. After packing our things and regretfully leaving the resort, the bus ride back to Okotama proved uneventful. The bus was mostly quiet, with students no doubt tired from the trip, making our return much more pleasant. Furthermore, with Ryo nowhere to be found and Megumi too tired to cause a fuss, I was even able to get some sleep. Now, if Ryo is not on the bus ride home, isn't that kind of a concern? I mean, he is a friend. I mean, it's not like I don't care about the guy. You would think that it would be a little more concerning to me if Ryo wasn't on the ride back. That's kind of weird. Anyway, thanks to that, although many hours had passed by, the bus ride felt like it had ended in a matter of minutes, and I woke up refreshed and ready to walk home. Uh-huh, back to the bridge. Huh? Rather than return straight home, I decided to pass by Shinatsu's bridge, spurred on by our late-night rendezvous the previous night. I hadn't expected to see Shinatsu there, of course. Like everyone else from school, she should have gone straight home. And yet, the moment I arrived at the bridge. Wow, there she is. Look out, look. She's actually looking gorgeous, too. Look at that dress. Yeah, that's cute. There she was. She looks, she even looks, she looks as into me as I probably feel about her, or I've revealed about to myself how I feel about her, that I'm falling in love with her. I should have known she'd be here. How many times have I met her on this bridge, anyway? I can't even remember. I feel like it's quickly becoming routine. Shinatsu's presence on this very bridge seems to be becoming a permanent fixture of Okutama, just like the trees, or the houses, or the street lamps. 
Um, hey there, Shinatsu. Shinatsu turned around, brushing a few strands of her hair out of her eyes as she did, and offered me a smile of her own. Hello there, Hideaki-kun. Not displaying any surprise at all, Shinatsu casually returned my greeting, almost as though she had been expecting me. I don't know how, but Shinatsu's greetings always make me feel like she's been waiting for me. You're standing by the bridge again, huh? It may seem like a silly statement, but I am kind of curious about it. Most students would head straight home after a trip like that, but not us two, apparently. Yes, um, well, it's kind of nostalgic, I suppose. Nostalgic? Did you uh, come here a lot when you were younger? No, not particularly. Honestly, I just like the sound of the running water. Shinatsu smiled sheepishly, playing with her hair as she spoke. Though my parents would probably find that statement morbid. Morbid? What do you mean? Though running water can be beautiful, it is also dangerous. I should know that better than anybody really, but it doesn't stop me from coming back here. I see, but didn't you say you were a good swimmer? That's right. I'm glad you remembered, Hideaki-kun. Ah, <laughs> it's not a big deal. Shinatsu only seems to be interested in reading and swimming, so it wasn't hard to remember. Huh. You know, um... Shinatsu looked up at me from beneath her long eyelashes. She blinked shyly as she tried to find the words, displaying an unbelievably cute side of herself. <laughs> I've been wondering something. I have my own reasons for standing by this bridge, but why do you so often come to spend time with me here? Don't you find it boring? I suppose it is kind of strange for two teenagers to always uh, just stand around a bridge like this. Uh, of course not. If I found it boring, I wouldn't keep coming back here. But I thought, um, maybe you were coming here out of obligation because I'm always on my own. When you say obligation, do you mean like those chocolates girls always give out to guys they don't really like on Valentine's Day? Ha 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 ha, yes, exactly like that. Well, you don't need to worry. I don't consider spending time with you to be a chore. In fact, I actually enjoy it. I, I'm glad to hear that. I was frightened that I may be becoming a burden to you. Why would you think that? She's the one burdening me? I'm the one always bothering Shinatsu, forcing myself on her. I, I don't know. I just feel that you're such a nice person, Hideaki. You're the sort of person who would sacrifice their free time for the sake of others, even if you didn't enjoy it. Hmm, that's probably true. How odd. I never thought Shinatsu's self-esteem was this poor. Then again, I don't actually know that much about Shinatsu, despite the number of times we've spoken. You aren't a burden, silly. Aren't we supposed to be friends? Friends? Shinatsu repeated the word slowly, holding her hands to her chest. Wow. It took her a few moments for it to finally sink in, but once it did... Th thank, thank you, Hideaki. I'm very flattered that you think of me as a friend. To be honest, I, I don't have many of them. Aww. I can't think why not. You're, uh, you're good company, Shinatsu. And she's pretty, but I know better than to say that aloud. Huh. Heck, I'm getting flustered just thinking about it. I don't think I've met a person like you before. When I'm with you, I feel like all my worries start to melt away. Wow. You're, you're flattering me. I'm really not that special. Maybe not. Not in the grand scheme of things. But so what? I'm not special either. Most people aren't. And the people in this world who are special, like my mother, are actually kind of hard to deal with. 
I still haven't forgiven her for taking me skydiving back then. Shinatsu giggled, holding one hand to her mouth. Your mother sounds very interesting. She is, and it can be pretty entertaining. But seriously, at that time I really thought I was going to die. If nothing else, that skydiving escapade taught me to value my own life more. Well, I'm okay with not being special. I've never been one to seek the limelight, and I don't need to be recognized by a lot of people. I just... I just wanted my existence to be recognized by at least one person. Aw, just one person? What is that supposed to mean? Has Shinatsu never felt close to anybody? What about her friends, teachers, or even her parents? Maybe it's because she's so quiet that she sinks into the background and other people don't notice her. But even if Shinatsu says she's okay with that, I can't believe her. After all, how many people, including extreme introverts, are truly content with leading such isolated lives? In reality, I think that Shinatsu does want someone by her side, someone to talk to, someone to confide in. And if that really is the case, then I'd be glad if that person is me. I'm happy that I met you, Hideaki. I really am. I... I couldn't think of a better friend to have. Ah. I opened my mouth to respond, but no words came out. I could feel my cheeks heating up as I stared at Shinatsu, wondering about what she just said. Was that a confession? <laughs> Maybe I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, but... Shinatsu's voice is so soft, and her cheeks are flushed light pink. I can't help but wonder... Is her heart pounding just as much as mine? I realize myself that I like Shinatsu. I like her a lot. That's why I keep returning to this bridge, drawn like an iron filing to a magnet. Shinatsu and I never talk about anything particularly riveting, both being decidedly unspecial in our own ways, but I wouldn't trade those moments of idle conversation I've spent with Shinatsu for the world. I like being with Shinatsu because I like her. This might be a bit too early, especially given that Shinatsu is so shy, but I need to tell her how I feel. These emotions have been building up within me for a while now, and I don't think I can keep them to myself anymore. Uh oh, wow. My heart just can't take it anymore. Sh Shinatsu, I, I am, I, yeah, I'm going for it, wow. Am I gonna be able to do it? Shinatsu, I, I, um... I swallowed my saliva, trying to wet my dry throat. I don't know if I'll be able to confess to her verbally, but a physical gesture should be good enough, right? I'm not going to kiss her, that would be far, far too sudden. But maybe if I could just hold her hand, that's not too forward, is it? I reached out, my fingertips twitching, in the evening cold. Wow, I am nervous. I am really, really nervous. Shinatsu was so close, staring at me with wide eyes, blushing just as much as I was. My fingers drew closer to her right hand until finally... Ah! Shinatsu suddenly let out a breathy explanation that made me jump. She retracted her hand and held it close to her chest, staring at me in disbelief. Oh no, Shinatsu, <laughs> no, <laughs> this is heartbreaking. Was that too forward after all? I, I'm sorry, Hideaki-kun, but I, I have to go now. Uh oh, oh no. Without another word, Shinatsu turned around and left. Ah, Shinatsu! Shinatsu, wait! I called out to her, reaching out my hand. But as I did, I realized that I had no plan. What am I doing? It's not like I can physically restrain her. And if casual contact was too much for her, what would Shinatsu think about me suddenly grabbing her wrist? 
Ah, <sighs> not that it matters now anyway, she's already gone. I leaned back against the steel railings of the bridge, relaxing my arms by my sides. That expression on Shinatsu's face, I don't think I'll ever forget it. She didn't just look surprised, Shinatsu looked horrified, as though I were some predator. Was it because of what I did? Did I really go too far? As I pondered my actions, I thought back to a manga I had read in the past. Or manga, manga. I think it's a manga. Uh, it was a story about a shy girl so terrified of the opposite sex that she fainted as soon as a boy touched her. Could Shinatsu have a similar fear? Hmm. No, of course not. That's just absurd. Things like that only happen in manga. Besides, if Shinatsu was afraid of me, she wouldn't have spoken to me so freely, especially not in the hot springs. But in that case, why did she look so deathly afraid of me? Well, maybe, maybe I misread the atmosphere. Perhaps Shinatsu doesn't like me after all. <laughs> I think it's just that first moment for both of them. I mean, she's probably never really held anybody's hands and same with him, so both of it both of them took it uh way too hard as i stared at the ceiling trying to fall asleep i kept replaying the moment on the bridge over and over and over now isn't that something that we do as humans i mean especially when it's the first time uh you know maybe a first kiss maybe a first you know, time you ask some girl out and you get rejected, whatever, uh, when you're that young and, and impressionable. Something like that can be traumatic and it can be something that just goes over and over and over in your mind a million times through. I mean, for a long time, for days or weeks even. So, man, I feel bad for the Shinatsu guy right now. Poor kid. The look on Shinatsu's face, the utter fear in her eyes. Her lips parted as though she was about to scream. I just don't get it. Was it really so wrong that I want to hold her hand? Ah, oh, so now I'm probably going to have a nightmare? Oh no, wow, 53 days later? Sheesh, wow. Summer break went by slowly, almost like a dream. I spent my days in relative isolation, cursing myself for the mistake which cost me a summer full of fond memories. Oh wow, see, 53 days later I'm still beating myself up for that. That's crazy, it's already August the 10th. Every day I thought about Shinatsu. I thought about what transpired between us. What could I do to make things right? But no matter how much I thought about it, no matter how many times I visited the bridge, there was no sign of her. Oh no, she's never at the bridge anymore? Wow, that sucks. As I grew increasingly desperate, I considered my options. Unfortunately, I couldn't call a girl without a mobile phone, nor could I simply show up on her doorstep. No matter what plan came to mind, it all seemed to be for naught. I can't believe she avoided me for the entire summer break. But with school resuming today, we're bound to see one another again, even if it's only for a moment. After such an isolated break, I crave the mere sight of Shinatsu. I did my best to keep the situation to myself, not telling a soul about what had happened, and in doing so, I ignored my friends. Now, isn't that sad that, you know, a kid, 16 years old, 17, I think he said he was 17, uh was so traumatized by trying to touch a girl he likes hand and she pulled away and made that horrible face that he remembers so well and then never shows up at the bridge again but i didn't even have any fun for an entire summer i mean that's a long time when you're that age and a summer is something that you really should enjoy i mean that's horrifying that you know a kid that young could be uh could let a moment like that ruin a whole summer at that age because let's face it we were only young once you know and every moment should be cherished every moment should be enjoyed uh the most that you can and to let something like that you know affect you so deeply that's kind of sad 
But even then, I couldn't tell them. What happened between Shinatsu and I felt private, like an argument between lovers. Ha, huh, Shinatsu and I? Lovers? Huh. I'm not even sure if our pointless conversations amount to us being friends. After all, if we really were friends, surely Shinatsu would have given some explanation for her sudden disappearance. As things are, I can only assume that she's trying to avoid me. And that thought hurts. Aw, I can understand that. Mom says, Haiti, are you okay? I grip my chopsticks, my fingers trembling, still unable to stop thinking about Shinatsu. Haiti, Aki, Earth to Haiti. Just what is she doing? Is she having breakfast with her family too? I wonder if she's thinking about me. Probably not. Haiti, are you listening to me? Ah. Uh, I jumped up, my eyes wide open. My mother was leaning across the dining table, peering at me with wide eyes. We're so close that our noses almost bump. I, I must have really been spacing out not to notice something like that. I shuffled back on my chair, then looked down at my legs, my face flushed. Honestly, you shouldn't get that close. It's weird, Mom. Weird? How is that weird? I'm your mother, Haiti. I gave birth to you. And we are a lot closer in the past, you know. It feels like only yesterday that your breakfast came from Mommy's. I get it, I get it already. Honestly, what's wrong with this mother of mine? I was already hesitating to eat. Did she think the mental image of her giving birth would make me feel better? Please, Mom, can you not bring up that kind of stuff while we're eating? <laughs> I know you gave birth to me. You don't need to remind me. Hmm, well, I just thought I should remind you in case you forgot. So now I'm kind of rejecting mom the same way I feel rejected by Shinatsu. I mean, a mother loves her kids, especially an only kid, more than words can say. And I can't even express that, you know, how much uh, a mother loves her kids. I know how much I love my kids and I didn't even give birth to them. So, you know, for a parent to watch their child grow up and then become independent, you know, is its own heartbreak in itself. You know, especially when they start to ignore you and, and, and you know, be a smart aleck to you and, and seem like they don't care. You know, I think all kids probably do care about their mother, especially in this situation. We know he cares about his mother, but still, mother loves their kids beyond words. And, you know, at this point when he's not listening to her and in his own world and, you know, kind of ignoring her, I'm sure it's kind of a little bit heartbreaking to her as well. I'm just saying. And that's why she got desperate and reminded him of, you know, giving birth. I gave birth to you, son. Forget? How could I forget something like that, that you gave birth to me? I don't know. You've been acting kind of distant lately. I thought maybe you'd forgotten all about your sad, lonely mother. Aw, sad, lonely mother. Ugh, an early morning guilt trip. That's the last thing I need. While pouting, my mother sat back down on her side of the table. Why can't a mother worry about her son, anyway? It isn't weird. It's only natural that I'd fuss over you, Heidi, given how depressed you've looked lately. Aw, she notices she cares about me. Be that as it may, you don't need to get in my face like that, Mom. I can't eat when you're all over me like that. Oh, please, like you were eating your food anyway. I winced and gripped my chopsticks more tightly. She's got me there. I've only taken a few bites of my food, and even then I hardly tasted it. Haiti, what's wrong? Why have you been acting so glum? <sighs> it's it's nothing. Maybe maybe it's just the heat, Mom. It is true that it's been hot lately, but why do you spend so little of your summer break outside? You should have been playing with your friends, going to the pool, or somewhere with air conditioning. When I was younger, I filled my summers with excitement, festivals, fireworks, fishing, trips to the beach, watermelon smashing, kicking cans. Nobody kicks cans nowadays, Mom. The 70s are over. 
Right, right. Uh, now you have all the video game consoles and touchscreens, right? That's right. So there's no need to hang around in the streets at night, get bitten by kakadas, or kick empty cans for fun. In fact, I can't think of anything I would enjoy less. Be that as it may, Mr. Grumpy, you should still find something uh, fun to do. You may have wasted your summer break, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't find some way to enjoy your time at school. I know that, Mom. I'm just... I'm not in the mood. I can't stop thinking about Shinatsu. I'm not entirely sure why I'm so devoted, given that the two of us aren't overly familiar, but I do consider her a precious friend. Maybe something more. Either way, right now, I just feel dejected. Remember, I'm just thinking this to myself. I'm not telling my mom all this. Dejected and lonely. Oh, silly Heidi. My mother once again leaned across the table, almost knocking over a bottle of ketchup as she did, and ruffled my hair. Aw. Hey, knock that off. I'm not a kid anymore. You might not be a kid, but you're still my kid, and I still worry about you. Ruffle, ruffle, ruffling my hair. You have to get out there, Heidi. Seize the day. Carpe diem. You mean carpe diem, right? Whatever, either one, she said carpe diem. Only one of them is right. It's sad seeing you skulk around the house like this. You should go do something wild, something exciting. On a school day? Shouldn't you have made that point weeks ago? Irrelevant. You only live once, Heidi. Seize the day. And my mom's exactly right. I mean, she has a reason to be concerned about me. She doesn't know that my heart's been broken all summer over what happened. I mean, and she's concerned. She can see it. Parents can always see this kind of stuff with their kids. You know? These platitudes all sound very impressive when my mother says them. But that's all they are, platitudes. Just inspirational blips of sound, devoid of any real meaning. In my mother's case, however, I know that she means them. My mom might not be the best cook, and she can be a little ditzy, but she's always earnest and sincere. Thinking like that, I can't help but feel guilty. Am I letting her down, whiling away my youth at home? But even if I am, I can't help it. I don't want to go to festivals, light fireworks, split watermelons at the beach, or kick cans in the street. I just want to talk to Shinatsu. Aww. Alright, so Friday, August the 10th, that's a weird day to go back to school. Despite my mother's efforts to cheer me up, I continued to sulk as the next stage of my morning began. Dressed, fed, and ready for school, I automatically headed to the bridge, a trip I made countless times over the break. But as I unconsciously began to walk there, my pace slowed, and my resolve dropped. Do I really want to see Shinatsu again? I barely know the girl, and ever since our last encounter, her existence has caused me nothing but pain. On the other hand, I'm never going to get anywhere, if I give up all hope. Perhaps there's a perfectly good reason why I didn't see her all summer. Shinatsu could have vacationed somewhere with her parents and forgot to tell me, or purposely chose not to, after what transpired between us. I ran through several scenarios in my head, assuring myself that Shinatsu had a legitimate reason for vanishing over the break. Whatever the case, now that school started up again, I should finally get to see her again. Even if I don't see her by the bridge, I can always seek her out in the club room. And when I do, what then? I'm still not entirely sure what I did wrong back then, but maybe I should open with an apology. I owe Shinatsu at least that much. After that, maybe we can put whatever happened in the past behind us, and we can become friends again. Because right now, there's nothing I want more than that. Alright, well, I guess I went by the bridge and, uh, hmm. As expected of the first day back at school, 
the morning classroom was full of life. Many students hadn't seen each other over the break, and there were plenty of stories to be told, so peace wasn't going to come easily. Girls banded together in groups, complimenting one another on the new hairstyles and talking about new singles released by their favorite idols. Guys sat and chatted about the cute girls they met while visiting family in the countryside and the latest video games to be released. Amidst all of this, I sat alone, removed from the action, feeling like a stranger. I continued to ignore Ryo, telling him to leave me alone, and truly left myself isolated. I just can't get into it today. All of their conversations feel so petty and pointless, not to mention the collective noise this class is generating. I've only just sat down and already want the day to be over. As the homeroom teacher finally arrives, everybody eventually settles down. They still whisper to one another and discreetly pass notes, but the noise is gone and I can relax once more. So here comes Megumi. Hey Aki, how was your summer vacation? Once lunchtime finally rolled around, Megumi, who was busy with student council work before homeroom, came bounding over to my desk. Sigh, the silence was short-lived after all. I don't want to hurt Megumi's feelings, but I'm really not in the mood right now. Uh, it was pretty uneventful, I suppose. Although I simply didn't want to talk, I certainly wasn't lying. Other than the incident with Shinatsu right at the start of the break, I didn't do anything noteworthy. Hey, so you're trying to sound all mysterious, are you? Mysterious? Yeah, like, if I told you what I did during the summer, I'm afraid I'd have to kill you. Uh, I don't remember saying anything like that. Does she think I'm a secret agent or something? I never really know what this girl is thinking. Anyway, sorry I didn't walk to school with you, Aki. You know I wanted to, but I had some student council work to do, so I had to arrive early. There was a lot for me to do, and there's still plenty left, so I'll probably be pretty busy for a while. Ah, but not so busy that we can't hang out, okay? I didn't get to see you at all over summer break, so we need to make up for lost time. Damn, this girl talks so quickly that I'm surprised she has time to breathe. Her lungs must be made of iron. H have you ever considered becoming an auctioneer, Megumi? Megumi blinked and tipped her head to the side, totally bewildered by my statement. No, why do you ask? No reason. I guess she hasn't realized it herself, huh? Anyway, I feel kind of bad that I wasn't able to walk to school with you, Aki, especially after I already promised. I hate breaking promises, both as a pure-hearted girl and as the class rep. What are you talking about? I don't remember any promise like that. <laughs> well, maybe I didn't make the promise with you, but I definitely promised myself. Sounds about right. Although I don't dislike Megumi, her stalker-like tendencies and airheaded nature drive me crazy. Seriously, how do you break a non-existent promise? And why should her promise involve showing up unannounced on my doorstep? Really, this girl... Eh. No, wait a minute. Maybe this is actually some kind of high-level manipulation technique. Maybe she's trying to guilt trip me using a fake promise as leverage. If so, this girl is more crafty than I thought. Now look at her face, aww. So, since I felt so bad about it, I thought I should at least eat lunch with you. I mean, we hardly get to talk to each other at all over the holidays. I've really missed you, you know? There it is. She broke a promise with herself, and now it's somehow my duty to make amends. Usually, I'd happily go along with her nonsense, but right now, no. Oh man, I flatly refused. Megumi continued to stare at me, sucking me in with her beautiful, hypnotic eyes. Oh, I just broke her heart. N not good. She almost got me there. 
but I've made up my mind. Even if it's unfair to Megumi, I won't be playing along. Come on, Aki. I'm going to eat out in the courtyard with some of my friends. You're more than welcome to join in. Ah, there's the excuse I need. In my current frame of mind, I don't know if I'm really in the mood to interact with other human beings. Just sitting here and talking with Megumi is already taking a toll on me. I shudder to think how I'd cope out in the courtyard surrounded by a squadron of Megumi's equally loud, talkative friends. Eh, it's alright, Megumi. I mean, I already opened my lunch, so... Ah, but you can pack it up in a second. You only need to put the lid back on. Darn, common sense wins again. But why does Megumi only seem to possess common sense when it's to my detriment? I know, but I really don't want to eat outside. I, um, I have heat stroke. You do? Oh, I just lied. Megumi began to panic, her eyes wide open with worry. Are you sure you don't want me to take you to see the school nurse, Heidi? You don't feel faint, do you? I'm okay. I just, uh, I have sensitive skin, so I'd prefer to sit inside, if that's okay with you. Ah, okay, I, I understand. Megumi agreed, but the worry on her face was soon overshadowed by disappointment. You can see that right here. Watching her feel so disheartened, I actually felt kind of bad for lying to her. I felt like I just left my dog at home, knowing it'd be lonely all day without me. But Megumi can handle this much, right? She said herself that she'd be with her other friends. Well, if you change your mind, feel free to come and join us, Heidi. We'd love to talk to you. So she says, but I've never even met Megumi's friends, outside of our mutual friends like Ryo. I really can't imagine why they would, in her words, love to talk to me. Of course, I know that Megumi really means that she would love to have me around, but... I shifted in my seat as the guilt mounted. Uh, I'm sorry, Megumi. I'll, I'll talk to you later, okay? Okay, maybe we can uh, walk to school together tomorrow? She's actually asking for permission. That's a first. Eh, maybe. Great. Then I'll see you later, Heidi. Enjoy your lunch. I will. And, um... Megumi stood up in front of my desk, fiddling with her hair. If you have sensitive skin, make sure to put a lot of sunscreen on, okay? I know that people think sunscreen is something you only put on at the beach, but they're wrong. You need to take care of yourself, okay? Don't worry, I will. And the guilt mounts further. Making the usually air-headed, talkative Megumi so worried and serious, I feel like I've committed a mortal sin. On the other hand, it's kind of refreshing to see this side of Megumi. I've always thought she acted more like a puppy than a class rep, but she actually has quite a motherly side to her. There might just be more to Megumi than I thought. Alright, bye-bye, Heidi. Bye. Megumi finally left the classroom, holding her own lunchbox in her hands. And along with Megumi, the stress and guilt eating at me died down, leaving only a painful reminder. I can't keep living like this. Wow. So, kind of a, a sad episode here with all that happened and with Heidi uh, Hideaki. Uh, taken so harshly and, and letting what happened with Shinatsu trying to hold her hand and her pulling away and then never coming back to the bridge, him never seeing her all summer. To see how that affected him is really kind of sad. And to be honest with you, living as a teenager myself, uh, you know, and remembering how much of a, cr you know, how a crush can overwhelm you at that age, uh, this is very plausible. I mean, all this is very realistic. It's not like some, you know, uh, some crazy story that could never happen. I mean, if it turns out the Shinatsu's a ghost and all that, of course. But the feelings 
of being rejected like that at that age can overwhelm you. I mean, I remember as a young kid, I don't know how old I was. I'm trying to think I was maybe around the same age, maybe 15, 16, uh, maybe a little bit younger. I was probably a little bit younger. But I remember one time thinking this girl that, you know, I used to walk to the bus stop and get on the bus. And I remember thinking that some girl uh, was pretty hot, you know, and that she would never want anything to do with me. And we were in the same classes and everything in school. And I remember one time she either said something to me for the life of me. I can't remember what it was, but she flirted with me or gave me some, you know, dazzling smile at the bus stop one time or something. And I remember thinking to myself, I mean, just a thousand times over again, wow, does this girl like me? Does this girl like me? What does that mean? What does that mean? You know, and it had been the first time that I ever had feelings like that. And she only lived down the street from me, but I myself was too shy to, you know, go knock on her door, say hi to her or anything like that. But I remember it was a cold day. It was like December or January, something like that. And I remember just wanting to see a glimpse of her, you know, just wanting, just hoping that if I saw her again, you know, that she would say hi or, you know, especially with just her and I, you know, if she walked down the street and I saw her, maybe she would say hi and maybe we'd have some kind of a cool conversation. And I remember sitting outside on the ice in really, really cold weather for like hours, just hoping that she would walk down the street to her friend's house or something like that, just hoping that I would see her alone, that maybe she'd smile at me again or something like that. And unfortunately, you know, I don't remember what happened with the girl, but we never really talked again. I never really saw her again. But, you know, this story reminds me of how at that age, any kind of flirts or any kind of friendship or any kind of rejection at that age can be super traumatic and can run through your mind a million times over. So, you know, I really like this episode. I, I think it's, you know, uh, pretty cool to see Idiaki having these kind of emotions and kind of see how Shinatsu reacted and stuff like that. And it definitely makes me more curious and interested to go in and play another episode soon so that we can find out if Idiaki. Uh, somehow see Shinatsu again, talks to her, and see what happens with that. So hopefully you guys are as interested as I am in the next episode. Uh, I'll try to get that up here soon on my channel. Hopefully it won't be another month, but I think I'll be playing it again before that. So I want to go and thank you guys for watching. Be sure you comment down below. Be sure you rate my video if you've enjoyed this video, and I want to go ahead and thank you guys for watching. This has been Zaxter99 and my playthrough of No One But You. Take care, everybody. We'll see you in the next video.